First of all, thank you very much, Vincata, for inviting me and uh, all the organizers. And thank you, everybody, for coming. I um, would like to talk today about a paper that uh, not so recent. It's a New Rips 2021, but it's a paper that I really like. Uh, it's a joint work with Abinatan Hasidim, Yossi Matias, Mario Schein from Google, Sandeep Silval from MIT, and Samson Zhu currently from Rice and uh, Berkeley. And I think at the time, Samson works at CMU. Uh, and uh, this result is about adversarial robustness of uh, streaming algorithm through important sampling. Um, what do I mean by that? Uh, we essentially can show, uh, and, and I will uh, talk uh, in, 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 more in more details later, but we can show that certain types of algorithms are adversary robust for free. And this is what sort of excites me about this paper. Uh, it's First of all, it's, it's nice. Uh, and uh, theoretically, it's not clear which type of algorithms yet. Uh, we don't fully understand what family of algorithms is adversary robust for free and, what, and which family is not. But also from a practical perspective is uh, quite uh, important, right? Because it allows, at least for this type of algorithms, if, if, if you already have implemented them in uh, some computer system, right? We, we don't really need to replace. We can just reuse them as is. Okay, let me maybe start with a few slides of a brief introduction to the models. I know this is already a uh, fourth or fifth talk on adversarial robustness, so most of you already are familiar with these models, but just for the completeness, let me very briefly uh, talk about these models. So the streaming model in the simplest form can be defined as follows. We have a sequence of elements, x1 to xm. Let's say every element is an integer from one to n, we have a predefined function f, and our goal is to compute or approximate this function. Uh, the following are uh, limitations that make these questions interesting. First of all, in the streaming model, we usually allow small space, sublinear space, which means that we cannot store the entire data in memory, and we cannot store a memory that is the size of our domain. And usually, not always, but usually we also demand that there is only a single pass over uh, the data set. So in, with these restrictions, it is often the case that we cannot uh, compute function f precisely, exactly, or we cannot uh, use uh, only deterministic algorithms. Typically, we require approximation and randomness. And so in the typical setting, then what we want to do, we want to output a number, if, if we want to compute a function number, that gives us a multiplicative one plus minus epsilon approximation of what we want with some probability. So usually uh, error, epsilon, and probability delta are parameters that are given uh, ahead of time to our Very nice. And so this is a well-studied model and many exciting results are known and many open pro problems are also uh, still exist. And uh, very recently, um, people became excited about another model uh, that is called adversarial streaming. It's a model that is harder than a uh, standard streaming model. Let me again very briefly remind what this model, what is, I guess, the most uh, basic variant of, of this model is about. So we can think about this model as a game between two players. We have our algorithm, a streaming algorithm, and we have an adversary. And the game begins when an adversary generates the first element of the stream. Uh, sends this element to our algorithm. 
the algorithm calculates or approximates a function on the first element. I forgot to say, right, that usually we consider functions that define not only on the entire stream, but also on all prefixes of the stream. So the algorithm sends uh, the approximation back to the adversary, and then the adversary generates the second element. And what makes it uh, interesting and challenging is that the second element is essentially a function, so it's not fixed. It uh, can be uh, nearly an uh, arbitrary function of the uh, first element and uh, the output that our first uh, our uh, streaming algorithms uh, send to the adversary. And so on and so forth. So now the adversary sends the second element to our algorithm and we continue in the same way. At time t, what we have, we have uh, that the uh, adversary generates element number t. And again, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an arbitrary function of every element that we have seen so far, x1 to t, x t minus one, and all the outputs of um, the algorithm that we have seen so far as well, and so on and so forth. So the goal of this game for the algorithm is to always output, so for every t output, a good approximation of uh, the function at hand. And the goal of the adversary is to make, uh, is to full algorithm at least once. Very nice. Uh, so as we already know, right, this is an exciting area, a relatively new area. There have been uh, numerous uh, results uh, in, in this model. And uh, in most cases, these results essentially prove that existing streaming algorithms, typically sketching algorithms, are not adversarially robust and they can be fooled without uh, extra care. And so then usually this extra care is provided. So what we did in our paper, we asked ourselves the following basic questions. Are there any streaming algorithms or method that are adversarial robust for free, that already give us adversarial robustness without uh, changes or with minimal changes. And the main result of our paper is that this is indeed the case for what is known as uh, corset-based uh, merge and reduce framework. And this is what I will show in, in, in my talk. And uh, surprisingly, it gives us adversarial robustness for a fairly large family of functions that include k-means, k-median, m-estimator, projective clustering, and so on and so forth. We also have some results that do not use merge and reduce, and based on what is known as important sampling. And we show that this uh, important sampling algorithms can also be made adversarially robust. But in this case, we have to make additional assumptions over our input. In other words, we have to assume that the adversary has limited power. And these uh, examples of such results include graph classifications of space embedding and other results. So what I will do in the remainder of this talk I will first of all give a brief introduction, I will not assume uh, that the audience knows uh, what merge and reduce or course sets are. So I will give a brief introduction to course sets and to merge and reduce. And then I will show uh, two, uh, uh, the adversarial robustness of two specific algorithms. One of them is k-median, uh, course sets for k-median, and another is a subspace, L2 subspace embedding. Okay, so let's begin with uh, showing that uh, merge and reduce uh, gives us adversarial robustness for k-median clustering. So let me first define k-median clustering. Uh, in general form, k-median clustering can be defined as follows. We have a metric space defined as a set X and, uh, and a distance D. We have a subset of uh, this metric space, and we have a set of centers. 
then the cost of connecting uh, this set P to a set of center C is just defined as a sum of uh, all distances where uh, we connect every point in our set P to the closest center in our set of center C. And so distance from a P to a set of centers is a minimum. So this is the distance to the closest, set, uh, closest center. And uh, the total cost is just the sum of uh, such uh, distances. So the goal of K-median is to find uh, a set of center C with the cardinality at most case, such as this cost is minimized. And this is known to be a hard problem. It's in P-hard. Uh, it's also very uh, uh, nice area of research. The, the, the exist multiple uh, approximation algorithms in uh, general metric case. Uh, in particular, the best current best result, as I believe, is by Birka, uh, is 2.611. The better results for uh, Euclidean spaces. Um, but this is for, for the offline setting. For the streaming setting, or more generally for the distributed setting, it is often the case that we want to use what is known uh, corset, right? And I will say a few words why uh, people like corsets, but let, let, let me first define it. So a corset, uh, let's say for K-median, is uh, a weighted subset of our input, right? So it's a subset of our input with some additional weight function, such that for any set of centers, the cost of connecting our input to the set of centers is approximately preserved when instead we connect our corset to the same set of centers. Right? So if this is a weighted uh, sum of all connections, right, then it's uh, one plus minus epsilon uh, approximation of the original cost of connecting our, our set of uh, points to uh, the given uh, set of centers at hand. And usually we have algorithms uh, that gives us small corsets, significantly smaller than uh, the size of the input. Right? So why this is interesting? It's interesting for many reasons. One of them is if we have a small corset, and we solve the problem of k-median or other problem on the corset, it also gives us a good approximation because of this uh, one plus minus epsilon approximation for every set of centers. So if, if we solve it and find the optimal set of centers for the corset, it will be nearly optimal set of centers for the original data set. And so this makes it very nice compression technique but beyond that, as we will see in a few minutes, it's also have usually corsets have nice properties of uh, mergeability or composability. So essentially I can take several corsets and merge them together and get a corset of the union, or uh, I can compute corset of a corset and it's still gonna be a corset. And these nice properties make it very nice uh, application for uh, such models, the streaming model, uh, distributed uh, computation, and so on and so forth. We also, I will not define them, but corsets actually are becoming quite popular for machine learning, where we can define corsets not only for k-median and k-means, but for a large variety of uh, functions and uh, query spaces. Very nice. Now, to be concrete, let me start with a very brief introduction to one of the most famous algorithms for offline corset construction, which is uh, the algorithm by uh, K. Chen from 2009. I will not prove the correctness of the algorithm, but I want just to explain how the algorithm works. So when, when we delve into adversarial robustness, we will have a complete picture of the algorithm. So first of all, 
we need to uh, understand that the fall and relaxation called the by criteria is an easier problem. What is a by criteria? By criteria for K median is a set of centers. So alpha, beta by criteria, we have two parameters, usually constant parameters, alpha and beta. It's uh, a set of centers such that the cost of connecting our input to the set of centers is at most alpha times OPT, where OPT is the optimal cost for the, our k-median problem. And the total number of centers in our criteria is at most beta times k. Right? So this, uh, 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 this uh, the by criteria approximates our solution in two ways, right? It allows us a larger set of centers, but it only requires a solution that is compared against the optimum for the original k median, right? And as you can imagine, uh, solving a problem, uh, a optimum uh, solution on uh, uh, beta k centers can be arbitrarily smaller than optimal solution on k centers. So that's why uh, this finding by criteria is a significantly simpler problem than solving k median. In particular, k chain will use the following well-known method by Piotr Indek, uh, very simple method that gives us a constant by criteria solution. Essentially, this method samples some sublinear number of points, solve k-median problem using some uh, approximation method for uh, k-median, for offline k-medians, finds another set of further points to this uh, current solution and store them as well. And, and, and this is our by criteria. Very nice. So now that we understand what the by criteria is, let's also very briefly understand what is the algorithm by kitchen. And it's also a very visually very simple method. So it just has five simple steps. Step number one, we find the by criteria, right? As uh, I just explained. And we calculate the cost of the by criteria divided by some number beta n. In the second step, we partition our data set around the centers of the by criteria in the same way that we did for uh, um, k median, right? We can assign every point in our data set to the closest center in, in the by criteria solution. And this induces a partition. And then we partition every element, uh, every PI, even further into what we call rings. I will show a picture in a second. So if this picture gives us a partition according to uh, our set of back criteria centers, right? So just fi find the closest point to the center and this is our partition. For every such partition, we split it further. We split it in rings and the ring is a very simple construction right essentially the first ring is just a ball of radius r around our center ai and then the next one is essentially a bagel right so it's a ball where we cut out the middle of the ball in in other words uh, ring uh, pij is a set of all points that are at a distance at most two to the j times r, and as a distance at least two to the j minus one times r. Very nice. So, so far I think it's very simple and clear what this algorithm does. In the next step, we sample from every ring, we sample some small number of uh, points independently, and assign, so in particular, the number of points, uh, that several different algorithms, but it's roughly polynomial in K, one over epsilon, log N, and log one over delta. And we assign a weight to every sample point that is essentially a shared weight. So if you have uh, a, a T elements, and uh, every uh, sample will, will get the weight T, T divided by S. So what is our core set at the end? It's a very simple construction, just a union of all such weighted data sets. So, of course, it's just a union of S and G. And uh, K-Chen showed that this gives us 
again, this is one over epsilon here and delta here, gives us a k epsilon corset with respect to p, with probability at least one minus delta. Okay, so I hope it's very clear. Let me summarize what we learned so far. Uh, essentially, our corset construction is given by some non-uniform sampling procedure where we sample a small number of points. And uh, again, I, I picked uh, keychain method because it's visually very clear uh, method, but it's certainly it's one of the first methods. And there was a long history of creating uh, essentially uh, uh, frameworks for uh, constructing corsets for various functions, so beyond k-median for uh, the whole families of functions. Perhaps the most famous one was um, is is a framework by Feldman and Landberg, right? Uh, and it's based on what is known as sensitivity sampling, where for every point we define uh, or approximate the sensitivity, essentially how important to sample this point in our corset. And then the corset is just uh, a set of uh, independent uh, samples weighted accordingly. Very nice. Okay, so hopefully it's clear how we construct a corset. Let's now delve into adversarial robustness. So what I want to show next is to convince you that uh, if we use a standard technique that is called merchant reduce for uh, constructing streaming corsets, that it gives us adversarial robustness for free. And before I do this, let me prove several very simple claims that will give us almost immediately this proof. So the proof is easy, but I just want to make it very clear. So claim number one, let us for a second consider uh, a weaker setting, right? And the setting is as follows. Our adversary first creates our input P, and then we run, uh, let's say, K chain algorithm or any other algorithm on P, and we use independent randomness, right? And what I mean independent, independent, so P can be a random uh, set of points, right? So uh, our algorithm has to use independent randomness from uh, P, okay? And then we run the keychain and output uh, corset S. Then the claim is that this is also, this, this S will also be a K epsilon corset with probability one minus delta. And this is indeed a very simple uh, claim, right? And it just follows from the independence. So because the random bits of our corset are independent from P, then condition on any event, let's say we fix a particular set of input that the adversary may produce, condition on this event that our stream is exactly P0, right? K chain will still output the core set with probability one minus delta, right? And then by simply using a law of full probability, the claim is correct. Very nice. Let us now make this claim slightly more uh, difficult. Now consider the standard adversarial setting, but now our algorithm can store the entire input, right? So that, that it sees so far. In other words, we allow linear memory. In this case, it's also very easy to see that we can achieve adversarial robustness. And again, it's a very simple trick, right? When we receive the next element xt, even if it's defined in adversarial way, we can simply discard whatever we did up to this point and run KHN algorithm on input x1 to xt using fresh randomness, right? And then simply by claim one, what we just explained, we will get a k epsilon corset at this particular moment t. And then we can just use union bound to ensure that it's always a correct answer. Okay, so I hope it's it's clear up to this point. And uh, now let us delve, in, in, equipped with these two simple claims, let us delve into merge and reduce. 
Before we delve into merging reduce, let us prove two very simple properties of uh, core sets for key median. And these properties are the key properties for uh, using merge and reduce. Property number one is a merge property or union property. And it's a very simple statement, right? If I have a core set, K epsilon core set for set A, and I have uh, a, a K epsilon core set for set B, and let's say A and B are disjoint, like in this picture, then the union of this uh, core sets will be a corset, K epsilon corset for the unit. Why this is true? This follows immediately from essentially the linearity of our cost function, right? So if this is a cost of connecting, if I fix any particular set of centers, the cost of connecting our first corset to the set of center plus the cost of connecting our second corset to the same set of centers will be bounded by the appropriate costs of um, our, our input same Okay, and the second property is the property of uh, reduce, right, it should be. And this property is the following. If I have a corset of a corset, then uh, this corset is also corset of the original data set when the error is roughly compounds roughly additively, right? In other words, if B is a K epsilon corset for A and Q is K delta, a K lambda corset for B, then Q is also a corset for A and the error is roughly uh, additive. So it's epsilon plus lambda plus epsilon lambda. And it's also a very simple proof and it just follows immediately from multiplying the errors, essentially. Okay, so I hope it's also very clear. Why is uh, this is, yes. Quick question, like, uh, do you need this A and B to be disjoint? Like, that's not necessary, right? Uh, no, it's not necessary, but for our applications, it will be disjoint, so. Okay. Um, okay, so now let's review uh, the famous framework of merge and reduce that is, uh, was designed perhaps first by Bentley and Sachs. And this framework uh, is originally designed for fixed data, right, for a fixed stream. However, we will see that it's also, it also works for uh, adversarial streams. Um, okay. So let me first briefly explain how it works on fixed streams without adversarial uh, input, and then we will understand why it also works for adversarial system. So we split, this is our stream. We split our stream into blocks. Every block is of size M. Well, let's say M is a memory that we allow, our algorithm can allow. And then at every, and then we treat this as leaves of our merchant reduced tree. Okay, every two uh, leaves are connected with internal node and every two internal nodes will be connected by the next internal node and so on and so forth. It's easy to see if our input is of size N, then the depth of this tree will be log N. And uh, at the bottom, at every leaf, we will construct K epsilon prime corset, where epsilon prime is roughly epsilon divided by log n. Okay. At every internal node, we will construct also epsilon prime K corset of its children. Like for example, at this node Z, Z will be a corset, let's say, that constructed using K chain method, right, with the parameters epsilon prime and K. As well. And so on and so forth. Now, several, several observations that we need to make. At time t, right, we need to keep a corset for the current block, and we need to keep a corset for a complete uh, subtrees. So let's say if we are here, right, then we need to keep a we don't have to keep corsets for these uh, leaves. We can essentially do a reduced step here and construct a corset for this internal node. 
And therefore, at any given point of time, this framework only needs to maintain log n different courses. That's it corresponds to a path from a leaf to uh, the root. Uh, so by our properties, the union of these corsets will be also a corset, right? And by the property that we just described, that the corset of a corset is a corset, uh, at any given point or uh, in, internal point of this tree, we also will, will have a corset. Now, what's important, so two, two points that we just made, right? At any given point of time, we only need log n corsets, right? And the error will, a, will be uh, propagated additively, right? So at level T, we will have a corset of uh, T times epsilon prime error, right? So at the, at, the, at the end, when we finish our reading our stream, our corset will, be, uh, will have error epsilon prime times log n, which is exactly what we need, K epsilon corset. So I hope this construction is very clear. And also uh, because the original, uh, uh, we run this framework with epsilon prime, which is epsilon divided by log n. If we have offline corset construction that uses f of epsilon n space, then the merging reduce construction will have, will need, um, f of epsilon divided by log n times log n space as well, right? And this, this comes from this substitution. An extra log n factor comes from the fact that we need to store log n uh, different courses along there. So I hope this is very clear. Now, how can we get uh, this uh, framework to be adversarial robust? Essentially, all we need to do is to invoke our claim one and claim two here. In particular, right, for every block, right, so that's, that's the difference, one, one of the difference. For every block, we want to run the key chain algorithm as we described it in claim two. So after seeing every new element, we rerun this using fresh randomness. And for any internal node, we're gonna run key chain algorithm using um, independent random bits, right, on the union of corset for its children. And by claim one, we will also have a corset, right? So let's make it a little bit more formal. So merging reduced with k-chain algorithm is very robust. Uh, for every block of size up to m, the algorithm outputs at any given point of time, outputs k epsilon prime corset by claim two, because we essentially store the block in our memory. Uh, for any internal node, let's say if you look at a node at level two, let's just see here uh, a picture, right? If this is our level two node, right? So this is the leaves and this is a level two node. Um, again, X here is K prime, uh, is K epsilon prime corset for uh, for B1 and Y is K epsilon prime corset for B2. And Z is K epsilon prime corset for the union of corset X and Y. And also note that now B1 and B2 are adversarial, right? So for example, B2 can be arbitrary function of B1. But it doesn't really matter, right? Because uh, by, uh, the reduced property, right, condition on the fact that X and Y are indeed corsets, as we already saw by our uh, claim uh, two, right? Z also will be a corset by our claim one. So that's that's entire uh, argument here, essentially, right? So despite the fact that our input is adversarial, uh, because we can essentially use fresh randomness and run a K chain algorithm from scratch on uh, these corsets, we obtain a corset for the union as well. So I hope this is all very clear. And in the same way at level T, if we repeat the same argument, at level T we will obtain K T epsilon prime corset 
And at any given point of time, we have a union of at most log n corsets. And thus, the result is also corset. So maybe let's stop here for a second, see if there are any questions. But I hope, I, I hope this argument is very clear. So even, even though the input might be adversarial here, because we rerun k chain from scratch using fresh randomness, the result will still be corset with high probability. So you would need like fresh randomness for every internal node, right? So yes. you yes. need like a lot of random bits. That's true. That's true. It's, it's a good question. I don't really know how to avoid this. That, that's actually might be a, a, a good open problem. Uh, but yes, at this point, we do need uh, a lot of fresh random. Yeah. So even in like general uh, adversarial setting, like uh, usually you the idea is to like keep a lot of uh, sketches, right? Like if I look at like uh, Woodruff and Samson. Right. So it's, yes, yes. In a sense, it's similar, right? I mean, in, in spirits, it's similar to, to, let's say, the idea of uh, flipping, right? Mm -hmm. When you see that algorithm provides a function and the value of the function changes rapidly, you you essentially throw away what, what you did before and use uh, fresh randomness. Yeah. So it's kind of the same idea, but you're absolutely correct. It's not clear whether or not this fresh randomness needed always, for example. Maybe we can reduce the number of times we invoke it. That's a good question. Okay, let me maybe summarize because we have 10 minutes left. But let me briefly summarize what we just had. So we just saw that the uh, merchant reduced framework is adversarially robust for key median, right? And as a result, for example, if we use it with, um, you know, we, we, we saw it for general metric spaces, but it also can be made uh, for Euclidean spaces and uh, for other spaces. Uh, and for example, we can get adversarial robust algorithm for uh, general KZ cluster and KZ cluster and generalization of key median where the distance function is also uh, taken uh, uh, this power of the distance partial function. For example, when z is equal to two, we get k means. When z is equal to one, we, give, we get k median. So if you use one of these uh, frameworks, general frameworks for KZ clustering, we, we, we immediately obtain adversarial robust variant of the same method. And then, as I said, it gives us these frameworks go beyond uh, clustering, right? We can also get uh, M estimator, projective clustering, uh, regression, and, and other functions. So I hope this is clear. Maybe let me uh, very briefly give another example uh, for a function on matrices, right? And this is L2 subspace embedding with merge and reduce, which essentially we will repeat the same type of argument but for a different notion of a distance and for a different uh, 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 set of uh, points. So uh, problem definition, L2 subspace embedding uh, is a following problem. If we have a matrix in, uh, let's say, R n uh, times D, and uh, our goal is to output a significantly smaller matrix M, where the number of rows in M is much smaller than the number of rows is eight, such that the norm of any vector multiplied by M approximately preserves the norm of the same vector multiplied by A. And this is for every, uh, why it's important, because it's true for every vector in our space. This is a very important problem, and uh, it allows us to solve many additional problems, such as uh, regression, uh, low rank approximation, and so on and so forth. And uh, there exist uh, many offline algorithms for this, uh, uh, type of problem. Usually they use d over epsilon square times uh, log n or log d uh, space. And uh, what I wanted to show also very briefly that we can use merge and reduce for this problem as well. 
because we can think of this problem as a corset problem. So this is a different function and different uh, query. We don't have a set of centers here, but we can think of M as a corset for A because, and X from our space being a query, because essentially the cost is approximately preserved here as well, right? Very nice. So all we need to apply merge and reduce framework is to make sure that these two properties of merge and reduce are also true here. And this is also very easy to see, right? So if we have a corset, if we have two different matrices and we have two different courses for each matrix, then a corset, a union here can be thought as just a matrix when I, I just stack rows of one corset on top of rows of another corset. It's going to be a, a union of M, M1 and M2 will be a corset for the union of A and B. Right? And this follows again from the additivity of our cost function. So M1, M2 multiplied by X is just a sum of the norms F1, F, uh, M1 times X and M2 times X. And therefore we have what we have. And the second property is also quite uh, simple. It's essentially the same uh, multiplication of errors, right? So both of these properties are correct. And therefore we can apply merge and reduce techniques for um, L2 subspace embedding. And as a result, we, we obtain directly a subspace embedding with, with a bound that looks something like that. So again, we're going to take uh, offline uh, uh, sampling-based uh, solution for subspace embedding based on leverage and sampling according to leverage scores, right? And as you can see, so the original uh, bound was log n here, but now because we use merge and reduce, uh, epsilon divided by log n will give us another log n square factor. And uh, the number of core sets that we need again is logarithmic. So at the end, we're going to get log n to the fourth bound. And then we have similar result for L space subspace embedding, LP regression, and so on and so forth. So maybe let me stop here, but very briefly, I wanted to mention uh, another result from the same paper, which uh, we, we try to ask the following question. Can we obtain, let's say, some functions such as subspace embedding without invoking merge and reduce, right? And uh, uh, here is an example of an algorithm that is usually used. It's uh, uh, important based sampling based on uh, computing approximate leverage scores. And usually in this setting, the correctness of this algorithm is proven by something like Friedman inequality, which is an equality for martingales, right? And why do we need martingales here? Because uh, sampled, uh, uh, essentially corset, the rows of the corset can be uh, viewed as, uh, as elements of the martingale. So what uh, happened when we try to repeat this proof? It goes through uh, almost fully. So in fact, the resulting uh, in, in, in the adversarial setting, we also can show that uh, the same sequence will also be a martingale. But the problem is, is that if we use here, I uh, want to use here Friedman or any similar inequality, right? Uh, in the uh, fixed setting, right? These parameters are constants. But in particular, uh, in previous work, use. Um, Something like that. Uh, but in our setting, AX, the matrix A, A is an uh, adversarial matrix. In particular, it's a random matrix that depends on the history that we have seen so far. So essentially, we cannot apply Friedman inequality or other uh, uh, Martingale inequality directly. And we have to make additional assumptions that essentially weakens the power of the adversary. In this case, we have to assume that essentially the singular values of the matrix are bounded from above and from below. And this, this introduces some additional extra factor. So there is a very nice open problem that we don't know. I mean, we, 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 this paper has appeared in 2021. We still don't know whether or not 
this, uh, such assumptions are necessary, or if we can use maybe different type of technique, uh, martingale-like technique, uh, that would uh, eliminate these assumptions. So maybe let me uh, summarize very briefly what we have. So in short, it's a very simple paper that shows adversarial robustness of the merchant reduced framework. And it implies that we have a large family of uh, functions that adversarial robust for free. Uh, we also have some additional results without uh, merchant reduce. But this result show adversarial robustness in a weaker setting where we need additional assumptions. And uh, as I said, the nice open problems, the two nice open problems here. One is uh, we don't really understand fully which uh, algorithms or which problem allow adversarial robustness for free. That would be nice to understand. And the second question, as I just said, is it possible to employ important sampling framework uh, without these assumptions on, uh, let's say, singular values? Uh, so let me stop here and thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free.